Hi everyone, <laughs> Natalia Rose here. Um, okay, so this is my first time going live with like setting it up on my own and <laughs> um, after some finagling, I think I'm actually, I've actually got it. Okay, uh, just wait a few minutes because I know a few of you are waiting to, um, to be part of this. And um, yeah, so I asked what you guys would most like to talk about from cleansing to beauty to sexuality to the fundamentals and um, functioning of the matrix, and there was a there were a lot of different responses, but uh, mostly, I think from what I got, it was mostly sexuality and or the matrix. So I thought, why not just put them together because it just makes sense. It's like really the sexuality that we. Um, that we know of, the sexuality that we understand, the, the relationships, the romance, the, they're all programs. So they come from the matrix. And I wanna try to do the best job I can to help you understand. So what I, I, even though it's hard to always check these things, let me know if you're like comprehending what I'm saying or if, you're, if I'm completely off the mark and I need to kind of go back to square one. I don't, again, this is my first time doing this sort of thing this way. So please, please, please bear with me. Um, so first of all, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world um, and feeling strong despite all the chaos and madness in this, what is really a restructuring, what is a falling away of the old and in order to rebuild the new. You know, we can't put new wine in old wineskins. So we have to, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a complete renovation that has to happen. So, you know, just begin by casting out as much fear as you can. Just just take a few deep breaths and release everything that everyone is, everyone that wants to hold on to the old because they don't know what the new means and what the new is going to bring. They, you know, they hold on to all this fear. Let that go, let that go. It's over, that time is past, it's done. We're here with the forces of light now. They're in charge and they're rectifying and restoring everything. So we have to, um, we have to tap into that if we're going to be able to release the fear and everything that goes with it because fear is a matrix program. So in order to, I guess the best way to, to dive into this would be to th talk about what the matrix is, all right? Just to get a, get a little fundamental understanding of what the matrix is. The matrix is a mind. It's a, a web of a mind. It's an, 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 a mental idea, basically is the best way to put it. It's the, the state of mind of an entity, a vast entity that is looking to exploit us. So we, as, as we're born, we're caught up into this web. I often describe it as the firefly that lands in the spider's web. And then they're stuck and they don't know what they're supposed to be. So what, how do we get stuck? Well, Bruce Lipton did this amazing study and he figured out that we are, in the first seven years of our lives, we're mostly in a theta state and a delta state. So when we're really little, we're in delta, and then as we get bigger, sort of between ages from zero to four, we're in delta from, or from delta, delta and theta, and then we move into theta and beta. But until we're about 12 years old, we're not in an alpha mindset where we're actually thinking for ourselves. Um, we're receiving, and it's much like the idea of the child being, um, being receptive. So we're, we're taking in all this information around us and that's how we're made. And in a perfect world, we would be having that experience, but good things would be coming into us, not, um, not things that would, that would be looking to exploit us over the long term. So we receive all these things, and this is information, it's intel, it's, it's, it's knowledge, and this is, this is what um, we can call the codes or the programs. So the codes and the programs come into us from a very young age, and we don't know any different. We just accept them, we take them on, we take them in. And that's then how we operate. That's our, our platform for operating in the world. Let me see if um, anyone has any questions. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and check this, this periodically. I get, um, all right, so, um, so if, if, we're, if we're brought into a system that doesn't have our best interest at heart, and it's looking to draw off our energy and use us and keep us down, then its, it's whole MO is gonna be, well, how do we keep this species weak? because how can you exploit something that's strong? It's really hard to do that. Let's get them weak, and then we can manipulate things to be as we would like them to be. So 
Unfortunately, this this entity in which this this mind field is is actually um, expressing around us that we're born into, it, because it, it's it's um, it's not coded for the light; it's coded for the dark. It inverts everything. It has no power of its own, um, and so in, ha in not having a power of its own, it has to replicate what what does exist, and that is the creator. That's the great force of life. That's the, the true intel, the, the true light codes. So when, in, in trying to manipulate us, it inverts everything. So it flips everything on its head, and this is where I wanna go with the sexuality. Everything we've been told, and this is, you know, this is a difficult conversation to have, it's not easy. I think it's, it'd be easier to avoid it, frankly, but we have to address it. We have to look on it, at it head on because it is so much at the center of why we're suffering so much. It's inverted everything that is good and true about our bodies and about connecting intimately and the, the, the um, say the, the essence of what happens in sexuality. It flips it around and it, it basically, where we should be working from here down, it flips it and it has it wor us working from the base up. But of course we never get anywhere if we start at the base. That's not how it works. So, so bottom line is we have to accept that, or let me say, you don't have to accept anything. First of all, anything I say that doesn't resonate, please leave it. I, I don't need you to believe anything. And I don't, I don't want followers. I actually, I want to help you all become masters and, escape, and come out of the matrix. There's purpose to this work. And the only purpose is for you guys to be free. And, um, and I know this all sounds kind of out there. So I appreciate that. And I, I'm really happy to, um, to field questions and I'll do the best I can to answer them. Um, you know, I've come to a point where this is all so clear to me and, um, and now my duty is to try to make it clear to others. And I'm not sure if I'm even at the point where I'm doing a good job of that, but let me try. Um, but yeah, so, so anything I, I say, this is, this is not, um, you know, anything that you have to, to take as gospel, of course. Um, but, but it's become so clear to me and it's made so much sense that I want to share it. And that's really, um, all that, um, I'm interested in is, is, is helping you guys be free from it. Because once you're free from false sexuality codes, your life will just take, you'll have a, you'll have a whole new understanding of, of how these false codes have, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, if, you know, if we don't start here, actually, it's kind of pointless because from, from the get-go, we're programmed with, you know, what relationships should look like, you know, the whole Disney movie thing and the, the it's, it's, <laughs> it's the romance myth and it's not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to, we're, we're not supposed to, let me go, I'm going down too, too many different rabbit holes here. Let me see what, how everybody is doing here, <laughs> all right. Is everyone happy at home? Okay, <laughs> we're, we're jumping down a rabbit hole anyway. Okay, so if, if we are taught things that are inversions of truth, then we're going to be doing the opposite of what's good for us. I'm gonna say something really big now and um, hope it comes out all right. When people pursue and engage with sexuality, they are working with, they're tapping into the energy of, the, of creation. It's, it's the power of life. So that, that power of life has magic in it. You could call it sex magic if you want to. I don't really love that term, um, but it is a kind of a magic because it's what creates life. So it's like a high, it's a high, high magic. If we don't treat that energy very carefully and approach it very, very sacredly, then it's, it's going to create things in our life that we didn't intend to happen because we were unconscious in terms of how we were using it. So first and foremost, I would just suggest that you, you think about all the different messages about sexuality that are running through our world right now. And I think it will dawn on you very quickly that it's all coming, it, it, all the messages are the inverse and all, all are working against the creative energy and for the exploitation of energy for your weakness. So let's take, I mean, just across the board, it's all about exploitation. So what happens is, um, and, and objectification, let me say, let's start with objectification. So the world tells us that we need to be sexy. That means that now two things are happening. One, we're, we, we're gonna artificially, we're gonna turn ourselves into an object. We're gonna be objectifying ourselves first and foremost, and then we're gonna allow ourselves to be objectified. 
And then we're going to look to become sexually attractive to another person. That's what sexy means. It's actually kind of weird <laughs> because, you know, why, why would we want to turn on another person's creative energy if we don't even know them intimately, if we don't even, if we don't even know who they are? Because most people just want to be sexy for everybody because they think that by being sexy, they'll be popular, liked, famous, whatever. It's, you know, they'll be, they'll be the center of attention, that they won't be rejected because um, the, the big fear is that, is that, you know, that, that this is the fear that the matrix puts into us is that we will be alone, that we will be, that we will be, um, that we'll be rejected. So this, this idea of sexiness to appeal to somebody else who's also objectified themselves and is shopping, is like on the market for somebody else, suddenly we've got two objects. We're buying and selling, we're trading, we're trading on ourselves. And that, that it, it basically puts us into the state of being a thing rather than this, in, this conscious being that is so unlimited and, and it puts us into a little box and then we have the issue of, um, of codependency because, well, this is what I shopped for and this is what I bought because this is what you were selling. And since I bought this, then you need to keep doing this. And then the relationship falls apart because you have unmet expectations and you didn't realize what you were signing up for because you were unconscious of, about the fact that you were even, you were even um, objectifying yourself to begin with. Sorry, is this making sense, guys? Okay. Um, so we need, we need to basically look at all of it and realize that it's been used against us. And it's not an easy task, but, um, but if we can flip it around, we can start to see what was really intended. And people who are pursuing sexual gratification unconsciously are making, you know, you know that movie, um, what was it, The, the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice? This is what comes to mind, the, the Disney movie. It was like the, the first Disney movie where Mickey Mouse, um, the, the apprentice, the, the, um, the, the sorcerer leaves him alone and, and he starts casting spells. He's working with all this magic, but he doesn't know what he's doing. And then suddenly the, the place is a mess and there's like buckets of water and the whole place is flooded and everything. That's, that's what is happening. We, we cannot misuse the sexual energy. So um, I strongly recommend that and this is, again, we're, we're talking like tackling massive territory right now. This is not like, this is not common conversation we're having, okay? I acknowledge that. But I don't really feel like there's a place for common everyday conversation anymore anyway because we have to grow. We've wasted a lot of time. We've allowed ourselves to become weakened by all these false programs. And it's go time. It's like, let's just, let's just fix this now. So a sexual reset. Everybody needs one. Even if, you know, it, it's, even if you're in a relationship, it, there's, there's got to be a place for stepping back, having a period of celibacy. I don't, you know, for, I'm not going to give you a time frame on what that needs to be or look like, but every single person on this planet that's been exposed to these false programs is, is weakened, has been made ill by them, and there needs to be a healing. And that healing can only come when we take a pause. And, you know, it's, 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 it's funny because what we actually want to do is, is not, when, when you start feeling like you don't need to be sexy, like you don't need to sell yourself, like you're not shopping or for another person to be this thing that you were programmed to believe you wanted, then you can, you know, you can say that you're, you're healing. But as long as those programs are running, you really need to take a step back. And I wouldn't play with the sexual magic and, and, and play with that energy. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a surprise. This is another kind of big statement, but it's, um, I've been wanting to talk about this stuff for so long, so I'm, I'm happy to have the opportunity, even if it's um, maybe, I don't know if it's the right form or not, but, um, but the more someone is disconnected from creator, from the creative force, from the, the, the forces of light, that which you know, we came in as a vessel carrying, the more they're disconnected from that, the more they're going to look to feel that in the wrong way with sexual gratification. So yes, you know, sex is incredibly pleasurable. Why is it pleasurable? What is the orgasm? Well, it's, it's connecting with the divine energy. So they're actually seeking the divine, but they don't realize they're seeking the divine. 
And that's a, a, you know, a massive epiphany when you certainly come to terms with that and you realize that these people who have addictions to pornography um, or to some, some kind of you know, sexual addiction, they're so hungry for divine connection. So what do we do? We need to get to a point where we first have divine connection and we have the, let's say, the, the, the orgasm of consciousness. We become self-realized. We, we know that, they're, that, that we are, you can even imagine it, almost like a cord coming through, the, the golden cord, the silver cord, it's referred to biblically. You can imagine that that energy is just coming right through you and into you and that you're fully connected. And then you can feel that energy in your heart because what happened is it will come down and it will expand in the heart. And when you have it there, it will move into the power, into the solar plexus, into the power center. And then you can ground it. And when you have that, the beauty of it is that you actually don't feel a compulsion to engage sexually with another person or with yourself or whatever it is that everyone, everyone is, is, is oversexed because they're underconnected. Then you can decide because then you're going to be in a much higher state and whatever you decide to do is, is probably going to be in alignment and it's going to be fine. I'm not saying don't have sexual engagements ever again. I'm saying that it's critical that we heal this, we restore the, we, 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 we flip that inversion back so it's, it's, we, we write it, we write everything, we restore everything to what is true and then we can you know, continue and engage and we'll make much better choices and we won't be making destructive, uh, we won't be engaging with sexual magic in a way that it creates destruction in our lives. So let's see, um, so let's just see. Okay, I miss, I mean, miss things if, they, if the things go, this is my first time, I keep on saying that, but I feel like you know, I'm, not, I'm not as good, I see other people are so good at, at managing the, the comments and everything, but I'm so happy you're all here anyway and I'm, I'm really grateful that um, you're indulging me in this conversation. <laughs> So, um, any questions so far about the matrix, how it operates, how we got here, how these programs are embedded in us, um, why the inversions, um, you know, um, in term, any, anyone want to even make any comments or say anything about exploitation, anything in your own lives that you want to reflect on, but, you know, do, do that on, you know, yourself, or if you want to post something, you can, um, but, but a period, a period of, you know, we, we fast. We don't, we take time away from eating when we know that how important it is to do that, to reset the palate, to give the, the digestive system a break. Well, we, we need to have sexual fasts as well so that we can make sure that everything is w the way it should be. Um, and, you know, it's funny coming from someone who's, um, you know, on a personal note, you know, I've, I've been married for 23 years and I'm, I'm now not in a marriage and it's, it's a wonderful, um, state to operate from to have and feel that autonomy and not feel like one has to be you know plugged into another person or um you know physically or just you know in terms of relationship to, to be in a, um you know in a relationship so it creates it gives it, it it's it's disempowering to feel that your life is incomplete if you're not um, engaging sexually or you're not, you don't have a partner and by the same token, haven't been married for so long. Um, there was the other program that was, well, if you're not doing it this often, then you don't have a healthy relationship. You know, if you're not, whatever it is, you know, two, three times a week, then, you know, and, and all of that is just pressure and it, it creates obviously pressure on the couple and everything, but it's, it's just more expectation and yet everyone is so exhausted and stressed and weakened because this matrix is constantly doing that. So anytime you feel pressure, anytime you feel stressed, anytime you feel um, exhausted, anxiety, that's all the matrix is trying to, um, trying, it's having its way with you, actually, there's a, there's a, that connects nicely. Um, and, and that's why we have to become sovereign. We can't, we can't be at the mercy of all these forces around us that would like to have us do its bidding. We need to do our own, which is coming from a higher place. And then we're grounded, and then we don't fall prey to all this stuff. I mean, most people have anxiety issues today. And that's just, that's not how we're supposed to be. Anyway, am I missing anything here? <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Andrea, thank you so much. Um, I, feel, I feel like it's kind of all over the map today, but I just wanted to at least do an initial, kind of open the, open the box a little bit, <laughs> as it were. Um, 
and, and you know, and also just yeah, I mean, to to have be able to have a sense of humor about the subject matter. I think, as I said earlier, people uh, I feel like there's so much avoidance. Even I mean, for a long time, I was the same way. I remember in the um, we covered this subject matter really deeply in the last course, and it was the first time I was actually coming out and speaking about sexuality, and I, I felt like I couldn't even get the words out because it was almost like such a taboo subject, and um, and yet it's the most important thing because if we, it's, it's the beginning of life, so if we don't engage properly sexually, and we don't, you know, there's, we're desecrating the most sacred energy, then, you know, then we have the, 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 um, the consequences of that, and then we, we're building families on a foundation that is all built on, um, you know, on, on poor understanding of how universal energy and, and spiritual energies work. And then, of course, then we wind up having broken homes. And I mean, I feel like we could restore, we could, we could prevent the next wave of unhappy childhoods and broken homes and all of this if we could just get this right. And, and it's about honoring ourselves because we have to come to a point where we, you see, when we're objectifying ourselves and allowing ourselves to be exploited, it's, it means that we don't actually value ourselves. So if, you, if we can grasp the intrinsic value that we all have, and, and then, then we're not going to be looking for a kind of a, a third rate relationship or, a, a, or, or just um, some kind of gratification in order to feel like we matter, like we're there, like, um, you know, like we're you know, in on everything the way the rest of the world seems to be. Um, although most of everyone's behind um, closed doors on their phones these days more than engaging with each other. Um, but you know what, maybe we can use that as an opportunity to, I mean, it's better we all get off our phones, but as, as I say this <laughs> on Facebook, but it's, um, you know, maybe this, it provides an opportunity to also, um, you know, not feel like we have to be engaging all the time, but our engagements have to get higher, they have to get much higher, and we have to have way, much higher standards, not because we're trying to play a game. You know, there was that, what was that book, um, uh, the rules, right? Playing by the rules. It's like, that's matrix. That's just like, okay, well now how am I going to strategize within the terms of the matrix? No, we don't want that. We want to have so much, such a strong sense of personal value and worth because, not because, you know, we're a snowflake, but because we're a human being and we're a vessel for the divine. And that is so um, quintessentially divine, that's so quintessentially um, beautiful and special and, and, and extraordinary and remarkable. And then we go selling ourselves cheaply, you know, to, to people who don't even value us, but then we don't value them either if we're in that mindset. We're not seeing their intrinsic value. We're not honoring them. We're not seeing the divine in them. And, you know, we can namaste till the cows come home and do all our up, downs and down dogs and, you know, and, and drink our green juice. But if we, if we're still playing that game, we're in the matrix, we're locked in that and we're never gonna be satisfied. All the sex in the world is gonna satisfy us because we're not actually communing with the divine from, from the top. So if we start at the bottom, it's over and out. Nothing, we're, we're gonna have, our lives are going to fall apart. We're gonna be inviting um, outcomes that come from um, unconscious sexual engagement, sexual magic. And we're never going to actually have the self value. We're gonna live our whole lives, live and die, never actually owning our wholeness and feeling that incredible um, sense of, of centering and self. So, let's see here. Sorry, I'm just gonna try and catch up. There's, there's a lot of comments and I'm not sure I can. That's great, yeah, intentional celibacy. It, 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 do, do long bouts of it. Let's, let's all embrace that. It's, it's the opposite of what the Matrix wants us to do. They want us to waste our sexual energy. They, they know how powerful it is, they. When I say they, I mean that, that force and it's a collective. When I say an entity, it's a collective. Um, it's like, if you can imagine it, the best way, you know, remember as above, so below. So the best way to understand it is the pathogenic overload in the body. The pathogens want you to consume sugars and starches because they want you to be a host for them. And then they'll, they'll use that and they'll, they'll proliferate and they'll take you over and they'll eat up all your, your cells, tissues, organs, bones, and you know, and they, then until you're done, they'll move on to the next one. So. The, the matrix is an entity of pathogenic intel, or not pathogenic intel, sorry, that's the wrong term. A, a matrix, uh, it's a, a pathogenic entity of, uh, how can I put this, let me get this right. It's an entity 
of pathogenic um, forces that have an appetite and in their appetite they work to create a scenario to perpetuate their food supply their energetic food supply because of course in the, at the end of the day it's all energy so as they grow the more they're fed the more they grow and so this matrix this um this mental field becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and as it gets bigger it's harder to get out of it more people are you know are caught up in it and it becomes even more convoluted as well because you know it becomes more intricate and it really really can lock you in that's why there's so much cognitive dissonance trying to get out of it and it's you know it can make you exhausted because mentally remember that you're when you're trying to get out of the matrix and you're trying to understand it it takes a huge amount of mental energy so you might actually find yourself getting pretty exhausted it doesn't mean that things aren't coming together it means that you're you're let's say um, the, the part of you that um, isn't stuck in in the sort of everyday day-to-day -day consciousness you could say the subconscious the, the the unconscious it's working it out and it, it needs to take in it needs to take in the understanding process it sleep integrate it and then it can take in a little bit more it's really hard, but what we're doing is we're, we're, we're taking ourselves out of this convoluted, in, intensely twisted, gnarly web. And that's why we're not able to access, because we've been in it, we're not able to access all our power, but as we start to, to extricate ourselves from it, more and more of our power retur restores and is returned. And I can only speak for that in, in terms of personal experience. Um, you know, it's, it's, I've done it myself. I'm not all the way there yet but I've done it enough to get out of it enough to feel the power that I had never felt before I was able to get out of it. Even with the, the cleansing work, it's so important. I mean, it's so important because if you're not, if you're in the matrix and you're consuming matrix foods and everything, you're, you're never gonna get out. So we have to do the cleansing. The cleansing is almost like a forerunner for what uh, it prepares you to be able to take these next steps. And the cleansing work and the, um, the shifting of your, your um, consciousness, your, your understanding of food and why we you know why we're socially conditioned to, to eat what we do and everything those those steps overcoming that is it, it you know it takes so much to overcome that and it gives you the guts uh and the sort of um to the, the temerity almost to um to reject the bigger things that the ideologies that are required to that you, that we need to reject in order to leave the matrix so it's almost like a, a really good place to get used to um, identifying truth, speaking up for your, your truth, um, making decisions that are bold that aren't typically, that aren't easily accepted by people in your life. Um, you know, it's just, it's a good practice ground and you, you get all the great results and then you get to a point where, okay, now you can really deal with the big things. So, let's see. even taught the matrix yes um, exactly so okay this is so great this is so great so uh, talking about the creative energy in the matrix the matrix doesn't want us to know what we can do with that power when we understand so so now let's 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 imagine that we've cleared all our sexual programs and that we're in a state of, of total self-awareness our value of self our intrinsic worth is clear that of others is clear which also of course creates really healthy boundaries because you would never cross another person's boundaries because and because you would honor them so much and and you would you wouldn't want to exploit them or objectify them because you honor them it's just you wouldn't even go there you wouldn't even think in those terms um but so let's say we get to that point there's a, a, a nice long period of of conscious uh, d deliberate celibacy and um and uh, appreciation of let's say the the sexual energy so i won't use the term sexual magic like i said i don't really love that term so let's say the sexual energy which is the creative force so so there's all this healing that's been done in this understanding and then you decide to engage because you, you, with the, the the person that you honor there's a mutual sense of, of honor and there's you're both taking your energy first from the divine and it's been brought into the heart the heart's expanded you've already had your heart orgasm you've already shared the the most intense energy you can in the heart space with that creative force because remember it's the same creative force it's just in the physical embodiment it's experienced physically so that's the only difference um, 
And then you consciously go into union with another person. Well, when you do that, you're going to be accessing the divine energy in the body and you're going to be able to, by honoring that energy, you're going to be able to manifest things that you would like to have happen in your life, in your world. But you already will be there because you're already, you're already there. You would have already arrived. Like there's nothing higher, there's nothing more that we could want in our lives than to be connected with the divine and be a conduit of that energy. So by the time it comes down to the physical level, it's not like you're going to be wanting to manifest fast cars and vacations and Louis Vuitton bags. You know, it's, it's, it's going to have a higher purpose. It's going to just, it's going to, whatever it is going to be for you, it's not going to be materialistic and um, that idea of manifesting, which I can't even, I can't stand the whole like, um, very materialistic, you're going to you know, dream of what you want and you're going to have it. You know, that's just, that's a total matrix manifestation and it's never going to give you freedom. But, um, but then you have something very powerful you're working with, and this is what the Matrix doesn't want you to know about. It doesn't want you to know that, that, you, can, um, that you can rouse and harness the creative forces of the universe in a, in a totally benevolent but effective way through sexual engagement. And you know, when in, in you're in your merging it with another person who is your equal, your, you know, your, your divine consort, and then you're, you're having, you know, double and it turns out probably exponentially the amount of power will be able to be generated from that. Um, so it's a complete, again, it's, it's, it's flipping, a, flipping the storyline on its head. Um, and it's so empowering and it's so beautiful. And at the same time, you can take it or leave it because it's not, it's, it's not going to, it's not ruling over you. This is the problem with the, the again, the, the matrix sexual program. It's just, it's, it, it, it makes you addicted and it makes you um, lustful. It, it, you know, lust and gluttony, I mean, so we can go back to the seven deadly sins, but, but they're, um, they're, they're both the most destructive elements. They will, they will eat you alive and they'll take you completely out of, you can't be in, in, in divine connection if you're, you know, if you're lusting for food or lusting for sex or lusting for clothes or lusting for attention or, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's like, it's a, it takes you right off the road. And, you know, you can say, you know, <laughs> the broad path, the narrow path, or, you know, you can, there's, it's, it's been said in so many different ways, way better than I could possibly say it, but, um, but it will derail you is the bottom line. So, you know, it's, it's, it's hard enough to, to get to write our dietetics and to get our heads around colonics and to, um, you know, to live differently than the mainstream in that sense. You know, this is like a whole nother um, sort of thing to, to bite off, but it will change everything in your life and you won't be destroyed by the forces that everybody else is being destroyed by. They're being destroyed by the food forces, they're being destroyed by the, by the sexual forces, they're being destroyed by the, um, the, the, vein, the, the forces of vanity, which are, it's all part of the same thing. It's like it's, like, it's just a, a, like a basket of uh, the same things that will um, prey on our fears um, because we don't, we don't have the real connection to the divine energy and make us weak and just really just siphon off all of our power. So I think, I mean, I think we've kind of done it. I don't know, have we done it? Um, just remember, remember that you're so sacred and anything that would make you feel like you um, could be turned into an object, that you would lose value or gain value based on the world's criteria, anything that would make you feel compelled to Put yourself in a situation that doesn't honor every aspect of yourself is just um, just a complete perversion of what is true and good and right in life. And strengthen that. You know, look at look at look at all in the eye and and don't be afraid of it. And don't be afraid of of places where you if you're engaging this way now. Don't don't beat yourself up. It's fine. We 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 have to you know, we have to see ourselves acting out these things in order to rectify them. I mean, it's, it's a little bit different for all of us, but it's a lot of the same because 
we're all in the same soup and we were all raised with the same you know matrix information so the, the same codings so we can support each other because we've all been there we all you know we all saw the same tv shows we all ate the same breakfast cereal we, you know we've, we've all you know been directed in the same way so don't beat yourself up but get serious about it because you can do so much good there can be so much healing you could prevent so much so many um undesirable consequences not just in your life now but of course this is a ripple effect because you know when we're talking about sexual energy we're talking about offspring we're talking about bringing children to the world we're talking about you know dealing with uh, situations where we're not ready to bring children into the world so then what do we do and you know it, it's a lot of the things that are hot button issues in our culture right now in you know like you know around even abortion let's if we're going to talk about everything let's talk about everything wouldn't be issues in the same way if we were holding everything sacred um, you know it's such a free-for-all out there and so we have to have it's 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 it's, it's difficult conversation let's have let's be let's get comfortable with difficult conversations what would the world look like if we were uh, we approached sexuality with the understanding of its sacredness and then on the very odd occasion there would be things that wouldn't fit then we can deal with them as one one offs right now we're dealing with catastrophes and having to uh, uh, catastrophes of outcomes that are it's, out, it's just out of control it's just out of control and it's just un, it's so unfair to everybody nobody nobody benefits by having uh, laws in place that um, you know that it just, that just perpetuate the um, that just allow these these uh, misguided ways of engaging with each other to continue if that makes sense so there's no con no condemnation not taking any sides just let's make this a lot better so that we can approach these very serious issues with a clear mind and not the matrix mind which would just completely pervert everything um, okay. oh thanks Lola <laughs> yeah the they are sovereign beings. There's the three children. Tundi, uh, the oldest, is going to Edinburgh in a few days to, to Scotland to go to university. She's definitely, you know, she turns 20 on Sunday. So it's, um, it's, it's quite something, but she is definitely, a, her, she's, she's pretty much always a sovereign being. Um, and anyway, yeah, thank you. So you guys, I know this was, this was um, probably, I don't know, it's not even what I expected. I kind of, I thought it would be a little bit easier actually to talk about these things. Um, and it's, I find it very difficult, even though I, I want to challenge the difficulty and approach it anyway and just open open it up. And I feel like maybe that's just what I'm here for. In terms of um, you know, my purpose in life, I kind of just feel like I'm part of the, 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 the support team. <laughs> and so it does, it does sometimes make it tricky because I've got to step into to muddy waters sometimes and deal with things that aren't easy. But, um, but yeah, if it's, if it's in any way helpful, to get us thinking, to to get us away from old ways of thinking that aren't working, and to um, to consider uh, new ways of thinking that are are that which has been righted, and then we can help we can help support each other through whatever comes up as we do that. But we'll no longer be hiding and or or, or you know really hiding from life because of um, you know, of not knowing how, like, how to deal with this stuff. And then what are we going to teach our children? It's, you know, it's, it's hard to have these conversations. For example, I, I tried to broach the subject with my son the other day, and he listens. It's so sweet. I actually really appreciate the fact that he, he gives me the airtime. Um, but, you know, it's like, you know, he's, a, he's a turning 18 next month, and this is not the way his friends think. This is not the way the world is... is telling him to go about his life and step into his manhood and um you know but i feel like what's the i have to i have to at least and it's it's, it's i know it's, it's even hard for me right now because it's like it goes so much against the grain and you don't think anyone wants to hear it so we have to speak to our kids we have to be bold we have to find a, a, a gentle but a, um but you know still a, a confident and bold way 
attachment because uh, of communicating it because actually there is a part of them that's listening and and those messages will they'll be reminded of them when they're in situations where they could go either way they might have that little you know mama or papa voice in the back of their head or a friend or an aunt and uncle or a grandparent you know you, there's lots of lots of you listening now are you know you, you're not raising your children but you're raising your, your grandkids or you're involved in your children in different you know in children's lives in various ways maybe you're a teacher or what but you know just just the, those little the, if they don't hear it from you they're not going to hear it in the world they're definitely not going to hear it in the world they're going to hear the opposite and then they're going to be working with this energy and they're going to be you know, the, the whole ripple effect of their life is going to come from the misuse of that energy. So we have to be bold. We have to say the things that are hard to say. And um, thank you for um, for just accepting the way it's coming out today because it's um, it's a little rough. All right. You guys, thank you so much for coming on. And um, we can talk about beauty and cleansing next time. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about anything really now it's since we i think we did the hardest subject first so <laughs> all right you guys have the most wonderful rest of the day again wherever you are in the world and um send you guys so much love believe in yourselves believe in your value don't let anyone objectify you don't objectify yourselves anymore see the bigger picture step back and get the eagle's vision um how else to put it all right um you guys thanks a lot lots and lots of love Okay, and if you send me, if you send questions to, if you want to PM me, I'll try to make this a little bit, um, I'll try and put it together in a way that's a bit easier to make sense of next time. This was just sort of a, um, a, a, a sort of first shot of just seeing if I could even make the technology work, frankly. All right, guys, so thank you so much. Lots and lots of love. Bye.